He is the head coach at SMU. The Stangs, the Mustangs are 6-2, coming off a dominant win against Tulsa. Rhett Lashley joins us. He's been with us before on 365 Sports. Paul Catalina, Craig, and David Smoke. Rhett, thank you for your time, Coach. We appreciate it. Are you guys playing right now? Coaches are never happy, but again, you have to be. You look like you're playing on all cylinders right now. Hey, thanks for having me back on. Yeah, I mean, we've played really well the last two weeks. Um, you know, it's, last week was just kind of one of those weeks that everything was clicking from offense, defense to teams. And, you know, things went our way, especially early, and it just kind of snowballed in our favor. Um, but I do think, you know, over the last three weeks, we've, you know, we've been playing a really good defense. I think it's the first time since 1984 we've held three straight conference opponents under 10 points. Um, and 10 points or less. And then I think offensively, specifically in the last couple of weeks, we've kind of found our identity. I think you've seen Preston start to get better and better each week. The more starts he has, I think we just, we've got guys that are stepping up, making plays. And then we've kind of, gotten better on special teams too so we're we're at least you know trending upward at the right time coach defense is i mean not only about your your athletes out there but it's also about like developing the attitude and the confidence and seemingly sometimes to me it seems like defenses are harder to learn for guys than offenses when they especially when they move up a level what has it been about this defense that's been able to gel so well not just the last few weeks but really for most of the year Man, you're right. I mean, look, it's hard to play defense in college football now. I mean, you're gonna people are gonna move the ball on you, uh, and to some degree, people are gonna score points. Um, but you know, we're running the same. We have the same defense coordinator, same scheme as we were running last year. You know, we we did add some pieces, um, which definitely helps. You know, good players will really help. But I think the best thing is they just bought in to the team defense aspect. To we play a lot of guys. Uh, on both sides of the ball, but specifically we're playing a lot of guys on defense and they're just swarming to the football. We're not giving up explosive plays. We've bought into stopping the run and we're swarming to the football. And that's really the three things we said we wanted to do. But the most important thing is that we run and swarm to the football and they've bought into that. And because of that, you know, when yeah, you they throw it out in space and the first guy missed the tackle, there's three more guys there. And so what, could have been a big play was a five yard game, you know, or when people have gotten this issue, we've got them on the ground. And so they'd get a 15, 20, 30 yard play. We get them on the ground. Now we get to play defense again. And, and oftentimes we've held them to a field goal or, or whatnot. And so they've just bought into this team. They bought into the team style of defense. What I'm telling you is, I mean, statistically we're, we're leading our league and in a lot of categories and we're, I think fifth in the country in defense. And yet we don't have one guy in the top 20, 25 in our conference and tackles. Hmm. You know, we, we don't have a guy in the top five in sacks, or at least we didn't come into the last game. Maybe we do now. I haven't checked. But, like, my point, we, we don't have uh, anybody with more than one or two interceptions. Like, they're just doing it as a group and as a unit, and that's been cool to see. You mentioned your quarterback, Preston Stone, the sophomore, uh, had as about one of the most efficient games you can possibly have this past weekend. I mean, 15-20, 371, and three TDs. Uh, it's a great line. Uh, you mentioned his growth. What kind of a personality is Preston, and uh, just what you know kind of uh, has been the story of him growing with that experience and, and just all the things that come with that to become the, the player that he's becoming in front of you right now? Yeah, it's been fun to watch. It's been a, a, a process that we knew it would be, you know. Um, we said this, you know, we had, had Tanner Mordecai for the last two years who came from OU. He had already kind of gone to college and learned and failed. And same thing with Shane Cashel when he came from Texas. And this was the first time in four years, we, or four or five years, really, we've had a high school quarterback that we were, you know, developing through. And, you know, he's ready, but he's still got to go do it and go play. And, and now he's eight starts in this season. And I think you're starting to see him get better and better each week. I mean, 15 completions for 370 yards is, is hard to do, you know. And so, but what what he's really done is, you know, he's just gotten – the first three or four games, I thought he played really well. His personality, he's outgoing, he's competitive, he's fiery. Uh, he loves to play the game. He loves to compete. So, you know, he's got that contagious kind of personality. You know, his second career start this year, he goes on the road to Norman and plays really well. And, and we're in position to – potentially win in the fourth quarter and you know but then two weeks later he probably played his worst game against you know TCU and the way he's bounced back over these last three or four weeks has been really good to see because you know I think he realized that every play doesn't have to be a big play a great play because he has the ability to extend plays make great plays make wow plays 
But I think what he's really starting to learn is I just need to make the routine plays routine. You know, I need to be able to get the ball to my hands quick, throw the slant, throw the screen, the spot of the bubble, or make the right read and hand it off instead of pull it to throw an RPO. Like, just make the routine plays routine. And then when it's not there or things break down, my my ability takes over, and then I can run around and extend the play and make those plays that a lot of guys can't make. And so I think he's kind of just grown in that over the last three or four or five weeks, and I think that's why his play and our offensive play has really improved. Red, is there any, uh, um, I guess, coincidence to the fact you're playing as well as you are? You had the tight losses in the Big Tw- to Big 12s, Oklahoma and TCU earlier, but you have the momentum of the announcement of the ACC. You're playing well, and what does this do with what you're doing now, that announcement and recruiting at this time? Yeah, I mean, it, what's going on here is, is massive for recruiting. I mean, there's so much momentum from – Obviously, the announcement that we're going to the ACC, you know, tonight they're going to announce our schedule for the next seven years. But I know at least for this year, you know, we'll know who we're playing next year, home and away and all that. And everybody's excited about that. Uh, We're building a new facility that we'll be moving into next year. I mean, there's a lot of things going. I think we just qualified for a bowl game for the fifth straight season. Um, So there's a lot of things that are going really well, and it's definitely having an impact in recruiting. I mean, you look, the 2025 class, we have a top 10 recruiting class right now. So there's a long way to go for us and everyone else in that. But my point is the type of high school players in the state that wanted have always wanted to come to SMU now feel like they can do it and play on the biggest stage. And so that's opened up a lot of doors. The challenge for us is, you know, this got announced on Friday before the first game of the season. And so yeah. we feel like we, we felt like then we had a team that could compete in our league. And now, you know, eight games in, we've confirmed that we have a chance to compete. And so, we got to do what we got to do down the stretch to give us that opportunity, but it's hard to stay present because our team and our staff, we're not worried about the ACC. You know, we're, we're in the American. We have four more regular season games left and right now we're tied for first. And so we want to do everything we can to maximize this year. But as far as the future goes, there's a ton of excitement and it definitely keeps boost to recruiting. Yeah, I guess it wouldn't complicate things if your whole goal is just get the best guys. You don't have to worry about what league you're going to. They can ask you questions like, look, we'll get into all the X's and O's later. <laughs> Let me sell you on SMU first, right? Yeah. Yeah, I tell you what, I'm, the most pressure I think I've ever felt was we played Louisiana Tech game one. And game ones are always tough. You want to get off to a good start. But after the announcement we just had on Friday, I mean, I didn't want to be the guy who lost to La Tech at home you know, after the best day in 40 years in SMU football. So, um, fortunately, our guys had took care of that one for us. Yeah, that's, I know you can't focus on it right now, but that is going to be very strange tonight, I'm sure, to see like Clemson or Florida State or Miami on the schedule. That's going to be very, very cool, and uh, can't wait to see what that, that ends up looking like. You mentioned the bowl game, though, and going back to back, I mean, you've got bigger, grander goals, obviously, uh, but can you just explain how important that is just in general? Is that something that you guys acknowledge and, and celebrate in any kind of way, or is it just kind of like, hey, that's cool, and we move on? But you know, not only that, but how big is that for a, a young program like yours to have all of that time and, and the, the development part of uh, having a bowl team? Yeah, well, look, we definitely celebrated. I think the coaches are like, oh, we got bigger. They're lying to you. <laughs> you know, that's step one. It's, it's a process. And if you want to, if you win a championship or get a chance to compete for one, at some point in time, you got to become bowl eligible. And, You know, we celebrate wins around here, and we celebrate those things. We celebrated it in the locker room. We didn't celebrate it like we've made it, right? We we do want to continue to play well and maybe do more this year. But, you know, it's a big deal. we got Jonathan McGill, who transferred from Stanford, graduated with a captain there. And this is going to be the first year he's gone to a bowl game. Mm. Like, it's a big deal. And so, uh, yes, you know, we want to win our league. But only one out of 14 teams is going to do that. And that doesn't mean all of the 13 teams had a horrible season. And so uh, our goals are, are intact. Our goal, goals are realistic. And they're attainable still, which is great, with four games to go. But, man, we're going to celebrate. It's hard to win in college football. Mm-hmm. And so uh, when we do, we, we definitely celebrate it. And then, you know, today being Monday, we've moved on. Uh, we got a really good rice team got to play. You played quarterback in high school. You obviously played at Arkansas, quarterback there. You've been an offensive, I guess, assistant G at all that throughout, offensive coordinator. Do you and offensive coordinators around the country feel guilty for making defensive coordinators not sleep at night? <laughs> oh, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> you know, we feel like it's, we feel like it's our, our 
God ordained right to just make their life as stressful as possible. <laughs> if you see a D coordinator with hair, we haven't done our job. Like, <laughs> they, they need, we, we uh, sometimes look around, we say it's professional courtesy. We owe it to make them stop this, you know? And, uh, <laughs> and so, I mean, look, they get to move around pre snap. They get to stem from even to odd. They get to blitz from all over the place, but we have to do something right to make it hard on them. And so it is, you know, our, our defensive coordinator, Scott Simons, who's obviously doing a fantastic job. It is, uh, it's, it's not always fun to see your guy struggle with how hard it is to stop people, but sometimes you see that and you go, okay, good. I'm glad I'm on this side of things. <laughs> can you, uh, can you give us a sneak peek yet on who you're going to play next year in the ACC? Are you, do, do you know that? Hey, you know, you'll know in an hour and 19 minutes. I do know. <laughs> All right. I know. But okay. We've, we've been given strict orders to, uh, I get it. to let it let it be announced on ACC Network. But I'll say this. It's going to be an incredible schedule. It, it may be obviously the best schedule we've had since we were in the Southwest Conference. It may be the best ever because our non-conference schedule is really good, too. Um, I think we're going to announce that today maybe as well. So, uh, you know, our home schedule is going to be really, really good. And I think there's going to be a lot of people filling up Ford Stadium with the new facility being built on time to start next season. And with the, you know, we're going to have seven home games. And I think people are going to really like who we're playing. Yeah. Uh, Coach, I'm an ACC grad. I'm an FSU guy. So I hope I'm coming to visit you guys in Dallas next year. <laughs> At some point. I look forward to seeing you. <laughs> Red, last thing for me, and we appreciate your time. Congratulations. And I know there's more, as you said, bigger fish to fry, but enjoy it. How much has this brought together the former players at SMU from back in the day, uh, whatever decade? How much more have you seen them involved now? Well, this this whole you know situation has been massive for our university. Now, to your point, when I got hired, it was an important thing for me and our staff that all our former players felt welcome back. Mm-hmm. You know, we reached out to the Eric Dickersons and the Craig James and all of them immediately. Harvey Armstrong, Jerry Balls, you name it, like. Um, everyone from 70s, 80s, you know, to recent. Like, we want them all to be around. So we've been working on that. But, yeah, I mean, Eric Dickerson was here this weekend for homecoming. He spoke to the team on Friday. And, uh, you know, James Prochet was standing on the sidelines during the game. Like, Harvey Armstrong was here. We want a lot of those guys to be back. But, but you know, that Friday, I'm just telling you, when it got announced about oh. the conference deal, I mean, there was – grown and when I say grown 50 60 70 80 year old men crying everywhere Mm. and it just showed you like those are people that have lived the entire 40 years you know since just about since SMU got the 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 death penalty and like to be back at the level that they feel like SMU belongs because we had been there on that national stage it was just a, a sense of great joy and relief for them and then for our players to see that and be able to feel like they can come back with great pride see what it's going to do for our entire university. It's just been a very uniting moment, and it's been really cool to see. But to your specific question on the former players, they are coming back more and more. We started that. Obviously, the momentum with the program definitely helps because everybody wants to you know, be around and be involved with the winner. Appreciate your time. Tell Chris Smith we appreciated getting you on as well. Thank you for your time. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Rhett Lashley, you. SMU football coach. They're 6-2, and two, losses to OU, 28-11, to 34-17 to, to TCU. Uh, they are 